When I think about Herb, I have nothing but great memories, great feelings, lots of joy. So many people are always asking me uh, how I got the idea for the brass and how we got organized. And I'm sure plenty of people are wondering the same about Brazil 66 and how you got the idea for the sound of the group. A nossa história começa mais ou menos há três anos atrás no Brasil, quando eu conheci os meus amigos João Cachorro e Cabeleira no Beco das Garrafas. O que o Sergio está dizendo, ele teve a ideia, enquanto ele estava assistindo esse bullfight em Tijuana, ele teve a ideia de combinar os sons do México, os mariachi sons, com os sons tradicionais sul-americanos antigos. Eu me desculpe, mas isso não é verdade. Não? In 1966, Jerry and I auditioned Sergio Mendez in Brazil, 66. Even before we got into the room, I remember hearing this sound, man, that was, like, interesting. It was a hybrid sound between Brazilian music, Brazilian jazz, American jazz, classical music, African. It had all these elements. And then to top it off, Lonnie was, was singing, and she was giving me goosebumps, too. There's so many people who can talk and talk and talk and just say nothing, or nearly nothing. I have used up all the skill and know, and at the end I've come to nothing, or nearly nothing. So I come back to my first note, as I must come back to you. I will pour into that one note all the love I feel for you. Sergio's a brilliant musician, and his instincts are terrific. When I produced that first album, Herb Albert Presents Sergio Mendes in Brazil 66, I just try to stay out of the way of the artists, give them, you know, honest feedback. He had a lot of experience in the studio. I had none. Herb was so knowledgeable of the recording process. You know, he really helped me. He would be like a producer, but at the same time allowing me to do my thing. But he would give some incredible suggestions. <laughs> Herb decided that he wanted Brazil 66 to open his shows for the next couple of months. And he was the biggest star, pop star, in the world at the time. So Brazil 66 went from playing small nightclubs to playing for 20,000 people overnight. Everywhere they go in, mass applause and big sales, you know, people buying records left and right from both artists, and it was just fantastic. For a new company to have this kind of a success, it's just incredible. So we played everywhere. I mean, in the United States and Canada. And for me, it was an incredible chance to be exposed to an audience here. And uh, it was great. It was like a, a wonderful thing. Because I've heard all the places was packed and filled arenas, a lot of laughs in the bus and in the plane. It's a wonderful time. <laughs> Well, I was calling her Mr. Albert <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and um, I remember uh, looking out the window and he was talking to somebody. We were in the airplane that he had chartered. And I turned around and I looked outside and he started, he was talking to somebody and he started laughing. And I had never seen him laugh before. And he has the most beautiful smile. And he's got these dimples. <laughs> so there, there it was, you know. I, I, I turned around, I did, I am in big trouble. 